you. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Wow. Ani Boju, that's a greeting in Anishinaabe Moen, uh, the language of my people. My name is Jen Harper, and I am Ojibwe from Northwestern Ontario. My home community is called North. The government official name for my family's reservation is Northwest Stangle 33. However, I like to talk about my people and the clan we come from. So we're the Bear Clan, and we have thrived and we lived around the Great Lakes for thousands of years pre-colonization. So I just want to warn everyone, um, I do talk about addiction and suicide, and if anyone is uncomfortable, please get up, leave if you have to, I take no offense to that. So helping the world see Indigenous faces. My story into starting this company that I built called Cheekbone Beauty Cosmetics is not the traditional path into the beauty industry whatsoever. I was actually selling fish, seafood at the time, when I had the most incredible, life-changing dream. So picture this, it's the middle of the night in January of 2015. I am dead asleep, but I wake up, and all I remember is three native little girls, their brown skin and their rosy little cheeks, and they were covered in lip gloss. How I knew it was lip gloss, I don't know, but I just knew. And uh, they were giggling and laughing, and that's literally what I remember from this dream. I grabbed my laptop and started writing out what is the foundation of our brand today, and that was to create a product, and at the time it was lip gloss, and use a portion of the profits to do something to support my Indigenous community. Fast forward, and we proudly have donated well over $350,000 back to organizations that support Indigenous youth. Very, very proud of that. We started a scholarship fund in 2021, that was actually the year we became a certified B Corp company as well, but our scholarship fund was started with one scholarship, then five the next year, and then last year we gave out 10, and this year we have a goal to give out 20. So we just wanna keep growing that, and we're really, really, I think of all the things that I've done on this journey, that's the one that I'm most proud of. So before you is a picture of what I think is one of the most beautiful women in the world. Um, it was my grandmother, Emily Paul. And my grandmother, Emily, is 16 years old in this picture. And my grandmother and my grandfather were both taken from our family's reservation when she was only six years old. So at six years old, she was forced to go into what is now known as residential school or boarding school in the United States. And this was a systematic abuse of my people. And this happened all over North America, where children were robbed from their families. And we've since learned that they were actually murdered, many of them murdered, because around Canada and the United States, bodies of children in unmarked graves have been dig dug up over this entire continent. And we know that this was built by church and state in order to assimilate indigenous people into a more European way of living. Because before this, our people were actually happy we were thriving, we were creating families and memories together until our entire culture was robbed from, from us. My grandmother, Emily, left that system at 16. And unfortunately, she left with so many scars and emotional, physical, physical and sexual abuse were part of our family's history. And I learned this term called generational or transgenerational trauma when a group of people or one person is faced with an event that they are not to, equipped to deal with, and in my grandparents' case, this was the residential school, and generational or transgenerational trauma was then passed on to my father, my aunties, my uncles, and then ultimately passed on to me and my siblings. So before I had that dream, I need to go back a little bit with you on my journey. Two months before having that dream, November 26, 2014, I got sober. I had battled alcoholism, thank you. I always feel like this is like a, an AA meeting when I say that, <laughs> but it's something I'm very proud of. I'll celebrate 10 years this year, so that, that feels uh, in, in, insane because it was certainly a mountain that I had to overcome. But my uh, grandmother and grandfather survived that, and learning that this term generational trauma exists helped me heal. It helped me recognize that 
I no longer have to live in the past, that I can understand that, but we can create something what is called generational healing and generational thriving for indigenous communities. Unfortunately, on this journey, part of my story is extremely painful. Um, suicide happens to be the cause of death for so many indigenous young people, and that includes my brother BJ. And just before launching this brand in 2016, he said something to me um, that I literally think about every single day because being an entrepreneur and starting a company, and I know many people in here will understand and feel this, that it's an absolute roller coaster ride. And on those days when it's really, really low, I think of what he told me and he said, Jen, our youth need help and they need hope and what you're doing with this brand is going to be great. And I really believe him. And at some times I'm also very angry with him because it's the reason I don't give up. It's the reason why I fight through all of those extremely hard days as we're building this company. But I'm very, very proud to know that we keep fighting and going because we have generations and next generations of indigenous kids that deserve to feel seen and be seen. And I call this my powerful companion of pain because it's the reason why our brand exists. Our mission and vision at Cheekbone Beauty is to help every indigenous person on this planet see and feel their value in the world while we craft sustainable color cosmetics that don't end up in a landfill and are made for every human being. Thanks. So how does someone who is selling fish um, start a, a beauty company? Well, that's a really great question and we're gonna get into that um, because I honestly have no be business being in this industry. But in 2019, we had the in, in opportunity to go on Canada's Shark Tank, which is called Dragon's Den. And I always share just this little bit of this story because it's really important to our journey and my journey is that those moments when you don't feel like you have the ability or the courage to do something. Uh, I had never pitched Cheekbone Beauty to anyone or anything until I actually went on Dragon's Den. I'm, I'm a very go big or go home kind of person, obviously. Um, and in those early days, it's so funny when I think back now, I'm like, why did no one stop me? Like I was selling fish. <laughs> And I, this is what I honestly think. I think my family was like, okay, she's not drinking. So like, let, let's less let her think she's going to start this cosmetics company that um, is now available in Sephora across the country and in 609 JCPenney locations in the United States. So we're very, very proud of our retail partnerships. But it all started with flexing that courage muscle or, or working on it, which happened on Dragon's Den. And from that moment, we grew exponentially in, in that year. And so starting this business was actually not that difficult. And I hate saying that because other entrepreneurs sometimes get really, really upset that I was like, this was actually pretty simple in this world of globalization. So I had that dream. Then I started searching. I'm like, well, how do you make a lip gloss? I mean, of course I was on YouTube and there was all kinds of ways that, that you could do this in your kitchen. Um, but I married someone in who works in the medical industry and regulatory and compliance. And so I knew right away that we would not be making makeup in our kitchen because there's all kinds of issues surrounding that within itself. Um, but I found what is called white label, private label, and there is manufacturers across the world who will actually sell you a product and all they're, you're, they're going to do is throw your logo on it. So that's how we had to start. However, literally within a few months of this, I would start asking questions because our consumer would start asking questions about the packaging, the ingredients. And I was blown away that when I would go to our partner and ask them about anything, they would completely ghost me. Like no one would answer it. And then I started to learn by diving in and doing more research that there was clearly something going on and things that they didn't want to know. And then I would re research ingredients myself and fully understand that these are clearly not how we want to make products. So we didn't. In that same year of being on Dragon's Den, I met our current and today's investors. They're called Raven Camp. 
capital. They're from here in Vancouver. They're actually the world's first indigenous investment fund. And thank goodness they were a startup at the same time as we were, because no one in their right mind would have invested in, in me, um, the fish lady selling makeup af afterward. When I think about it now, I was like, you would go to your bank. I'm not a celebrity. I'm not an influencer. I had no experience in this space. Why in the heck would anyone have ever given me money? Thankfully, these guys that really didn't know what they were doing either, I think, <laughs> gave me money too. But it worked. It worked out, I think, to all of our benefit. Let's hope someday. Um, but I went to them and I said, look, like I have these incredible ideas about how I want to make products and this, this concept, you know, it's, it's sustainability. It's like, historically speaking, I have coined indigenous people and I've said this publicly numerous times, we are the OGs of sustainability. Now think about that. Let's just think about that for a second. My people, no matter where we are from around this planet, Who's on the front lines of a protest when the Amazon rainforest is being harmed? Who's on the front lines in Australia, in the outback? And who's on the front lines in Canada when we're, we're fish farming like crazy and destroying our aquatic life and, and rivers and pipelines in the United States? Who are the people that are there on the front lines? It is indigenous people. It was Native Americans on the pump li pi pipeline front lines take, uh, fighting literally for their lives and going to jail because they understood and believed that this shouldn't happen to our land. And it is because we as a people have this innate connection to all living things. This is cultural, this is spiritual, this is who we are, this is who our ancestors were, and we're still the ones here to this day that understands this in such a deep level. And I try to explain this always with a story. So when I think about um, my dad, he always tells me the most incredible things and is literally the epitome of a native dude who doesn't say very many words ever. He's very quiet, he just observes, but uh, always has these incredible droplets of wisdom. And I remember calling him one spring, and I, I was complaining, obviously, about work or something like that, and he just listens. And uh, he just paused and he said, he said, our cousins are coming for a visit now. Um, I, I, I have to go greet them. And I'm like, oh, okay, no problem. Who's coming over? And I'm naming off my cousins, Rodney, Bruce. And he's like, no, 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 the bears, they're coming out of, out of hibernation. And, and to him, I was giggling, but he was dead serious because that is our family. That is what he was doing. This is, this, this is our connection. We come from the bear clan, um, my, my family. And it only helped me truly understand that that's what this is. This is this innate desire that we have to do things better. So this image is the picture that we launched with when we launched in Sephora Canada. This was our entire collection of products completely revamped, re we for reformulated um, new packaging to, to meet this standard. We have this concept that we use. Uh, we built a lab in our headquarters in St. Catharines, Ontario. We hired a chemist and we worked with sustainability experts. And we used the concept that is called life cycle thinking or life cycle analysis. It was coined by the University of Portugal, it's when you look at the entire life cycle of a product, which includes packaging. And in the beauty space, for so long, they've been focused on this made up term clean, which nobody has any information actually on. Um, so we wanted to think about the whole process, not just the formulation of the raw ingredients and how they impact our ecosystems, but packaging and what that would do. So we worked backwards because our goal is not to end up in a landfill or have ingredients that negatively impact our environments, and we worked backwards. And this was the line that we launched with, and we're so proud of the products that we sell and put into the world today. This picture is really important to, to me as an Indigenous woman because as a brand, we want to be very clear that no one has any idea what Indigenous really looks like. And so these were the models, all Indigenous, by the way, that we used in our campaign at Sephora when we launched there. What sets us apart? I think everything I've mentioned are all the things that set us apart. Of course, this idea of bringing Indigenous wisdom and marrying it with Western science, and then how we make our formulations. In this lab we built, we call it our Indigenous Innovation Lab, and that's where we work on formulating products, and then we have our co-packing partners around the world that, that help us uh, do our large-scale manufacturing, and of course, proudly becoming a B Corp certified company, and one, because it aligned so well with our Indigenous values, but I think it 
it's very clear that the B Corp community is, is not, uh, doesn't have enough color as far as I was concerned in the like. So I was very hesitant, to be quite honest with you, to join this community. However, I believe, and from tons of conversations with, with folks in the organization, that that is changing and will change. And so we were proudly uh, proud to become a part of this because of those value systems aligning. When I built this company, we used my Anishinaabe teachings or my indigenous roots to do so. We use what is called the seven grandfather teachings as our core values of our company. And the first of the seven grandfather teachings, which aligned so well with the B Corp community, is love. And it's always very strange for people in the business world to hear that you're leading with love, but that's what we do at Cheekbone Beauty. And of course, other powerful powerful um, values like humility, bravery, honesty, all of those things that really, really matter when we're building companies. This is one story that I always love to share because I really want people to just go out and ask for things because you never know what is going to happen. This is an incredible campaign we did. If you have 90 seconds to watch the most beautiful commercial ever made, in my opinion, it's Google or YouTube, write the story, Cheekbone Beauty. Uh, we shot this with an organization called Sid Lee. So we were looking for a new marketing company at the time and Madeline who, uh, no longer works for us, not because she didn't bring a marketing company, she, we just moved on, but um, she showed up with this creative agency. And so there's a big difference between creative and marketing agencies. Anyway, we're on the call and I'm like Googling these people, like who are they? They're called Sid Lee and they actually created the campaign for the Toronto Raptors, We the North. So immediately I'm like, what is she doing? We can't afford these people. We get to the end of the call and I said, look, thank you for listening to our story and your time, but obviously we can't afford you. And, and they said, no, no, you don't understand. We get to pick a brand that we wanna do pro bono work for every year and we've picked Cheekbone Beauty. And that was $500,000 in pro bono work. Then they entered us in this competition called the Idea Competition. And from that, we won a million dollars in ad spend through Bell Media, Canada's largest media organization, and created this campaign, Write the Story. We couldn't afford the hard cost as a brand, Cheekbone Beauty, uh, and so I, I worked up my courage to go ask Sephora for $150,000, and they said yes, so we were able to make the incredible commercial. Thank you. We also have won so many awards in the innovation space, and I'm really, really proud of that as a founder that actually failed science in grade nine and 10, not just one year, but two. And now I write checks to scientists and own a lab that has all kinds of equipment in it that I don't know how it works, but that is the beauty about entrepreneurship because you can find brilliant people to do all those things that you don't know how to do. This is called the Niagara Project. We've actually worked on this for four years. Shopify was the number one winner in this year in that category. And we're extracting active ingredients from grape stem skins and seeds to put in future formulations that we're working on. So our lab is well used. This happened uh, last year as well, which is something that means nothing, but I'm so proud of it because I believe in the power of a vision board and manifestation. I put Entrepreneur Magazine, along with Sephora, by the way, on my vision board way back when I started this. And uh, last year I made this list of 100 women of influence along with Jennifer Lopez and Kim Kardashian. But it was just really cool that that was on the vision board. My one last story. It's one of the most moving things that's happened to me on this journey, but it's this idea of representation and how much it matters. Um, when I was a little girl, I never saw myself represented anywhere. I did not feel seen and I felt actually quite out of place in most places because when you're half white and half indigenous, you don't fit in on the res and you don't fit in off the res. So very, very lonely times as a kid. In June of last year, we got to do this incredible campaign that we won two major beauty marketing awards called Hashtag Glossed Over. This was a very controversial but exciting campaign. We sent these PR boxes to all kinds of beauty influencers. And when you opened up the box, it said, there was three lip glosses, E. coli kisses, mercury shimmer, and luscious lead. 
and we put, you would never put this on your lips, so why should First Nations have to, people have to do that? And that was, you know, calling out uh, that our communities don't have clean drinking water across Canada and in the United States, this happens. And winning those awards was powerful. Sephora allowed us that month also to do presentations and, and um, events in all of their locations across the country. This was one night at the Eaton Center I walked into the Eaton Center that morning, which is a big mall in downtown Toronto, and I looked up and I saw this massive billboard, and it was that first image that we launched in Sephora with, and it said, Cheekbone Beauty now available at Sephora. And I started sobbing because I was like, as a little girl, I grew up in native public housing in Scarborough, and when I would go to the Eaton Center, we would be accused of stealing with my dad, or somebody would be arguing with him about our status card. So never in a million years did I imagine having a brand available in a store like Sephora. <laughs> and then when this little girl came in that evening with her family, she was just so spunky. She already had all of this confidence that I didn't have at 12. But after meeting her and her little brother when I was driving home that night, I literally sat there in my car and like, like in, in my cells felt why representation mattered. Because her and her little brother just met another Ojibwe woman and will never wonder what's possible for their future. Thank you.